Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney and I have another Sew the Look here for you today. Alright, so the two components of the Sew the Look um, are actually a Meghan Markle aka the Duchess of Sussex look that I really wanted to recreate um, but I had fabric enough to do a jacket as well so I actually took it a step further and made a whole suit out of it I don't know that I'll ever wear it as a suit it looks very retro as a suit which is also it's kind of fun uh, very 1940s I feel like but um, it can also I'll probably more likely wear it as separates because um, you'll see why in a second <laughs> Okay, so let's dig in. Um, so this is related to coat making month. I really made more of a jacket, although it's a lot of coat type things. And I don't have any B-roll to send you to today. Um, yeah, I've been doing that. Um, the la last coat that we'll be doing for coat making month will actually be on Tuesday, which I know is technically February. But <laughs> that's just how things kind of timed out. Um, and we'll talk more about that at the end of this video. So let's dig in. Okay. This was the outfit. This was the outfit that Meghan Markle was wearing, and I think this might have been before she was married to Prince Harry. Maybe not, though. It may be after. Um, anyway, I loved it. I loved a few things about this outfit. Number one, um, I love the monochromatic look. I think that's very elongating, and it looked very uh, chic to me. Um, and number two, Meghan Markle is a, a uh, inverse triangle, so she's got broader shoulders and then a real narrow hips, and not a lot of de delineation between her waist and hips. She's pretty straight through there. I am kind of an inverted triangle. Um, I don't have broad shoulders, but I have a large bust, which can make me seem top happy, top heavy, like a broad shoulder would uh, make someone appear. Um, and I also have very delineate, very little delineation between my waist and hips. Now, there's a lot of inverted triangle looks that I don't particularly um, drawn to because, you know, a lot of times they'll have inverted triangles showing off their shoulders because there's such a strong point on them. Um, and I don't really have that shoulder line. Um, but when it comes to the lower half of the body, I totally um, will follow a lot of rules of the inverted triangle. And uh, one thing I loved about this skirt was the attention that it brings to the hips. So I loved the, um, the detail, the little pockets there. Uh, that kind of drew the eye to the hip, which then creates, I want attention drawn to my hips so it'll help balance out my upper body. So anyway, <laughs> those were kind of the components of this look that really uh, caught my attention. So in searching around and looking for patterns, um, I came across the, um, the skirt was really what, what drew me the most because, um, you know, the top is just a basic, uh, sweater really um, but I wanted to find a really cool skirt with some really neat pocket details enter the Stanwick skirt by Charm Patterns. It's a Gertie pattern um, Charm Patterns and I made that last for last week so the or um, just the coat making <laughs> it was not a so the look but I made that I just had extra fabric left over that hounds too and decided to go ahead and try the skirt before I made this one and loved it so I made just the regular straight skirt. So this skirt pattern has a flared option, a gourd skirt actually, that I really want to try I think um, for the summer. Uh, and then it has the straight, the straight skirts. Um, the skirt has no pockets. You can make it without pockets. Just a plain straight skirt, which is what I did for last week's skirt. And then it also has uh, two po pocket options. So you can do just a curved pocket or a really cool shaped pocket, which is what I did with mine. So I had this, hold on, I've got multiple things in my lap here. Where's the skirt? That's the jacket. Skirt, skirt, skirt. Here it is. <laughs> okay, so I had um, this gorgeous bottle green wool. Oh, there we go. I was gonna say, hopefully it comes across the color. Uh, this gorgeous bottle green wool that I um, got from Minerva, and this was um, part of the Minerva Makers Network. So um, you can go follow me on over there, and um, I've got a whole write-up of this... Uh, uh, skirt because I I was gifted fabric in exchange for the post so you can go over there and check that out if you are interested uh, but I loved this it was the perfect color to recreate that look um, again I did the shaped pockets which are just so beautiful this is also really wrinkly and I apologize I should have given this a better press before <laughs> bringing it over here but <clears throat> anyway <laughs> so I made a size so the same thing with the skirt, I used the same pattern. So technically I did a six in the hip and graded up to an eight at the waist. The eight was perfect at the waist. However, I ended up, there's quite a bit of curve in the hip on this pattern, which as I just said, I don't have a lot of curve on my hip. So I had to shave a lot of that off. So probably it was probably more like a four to an eight. Um, 
Oh, hello. Are you joining us? We have a, a visitor today. Come on. There she is. Oh, Gidget, say hello. Oh. <laughs> Gidget's going to have a bath on Saturday. She's got a grooming appointment. You'll be so pretty. Okay, um, so the same thing as the other skirt that I made last week. Now, with this one, I did, the instructions actually have you do a lap zipper in the back. For my skirt last week, because my wool was so thick, I just did a slot zipper. Um, but I went ahead and did the uh, lap zipper on this one. Oh my gosh, that is so wrinkly. <laughs> I promise. I promise that things look better. Um, yeah, sorry about that. Um, it's got the kick pleat that's there at the bottom. Um, I did fully line it in some china silk that I had left over that is very vibrant. Um, and I use this actually on the same, on the other skirt as well. Um, let's see, I had these buttons in my stash that actually came off of a men's sport coat that I had a really, it was like a size 52 men's, I think, or a 54, because I had been, when I was still, um, working I, in a workroom, um, I, I was doing custom work and stuff for clients. I had a uh, very large football player that had requested a crazy suit, you know, like um, you see at Christmas time, but like the ugly Christmas sweater, but the suit, because he couldn't find them anywhere in his size because he was such a, a big, broad guy. So I went to Goodwill, and you have, it's hard to find patterns that are uh, for that large of a man as well. So I went to Goodwill and um, found a 54 men's blazer and then just took it apart and used that for the pattern. Anyway, these were the buttons off that. <laughs> I went ahead and salvaged what I could from that jacket. And um, yeah, they went really, really well with, uh, with that. And I thought it added a nice little detail um, to that skirt as well. It's just a simple hook and eye there in the back, a very simple um, standard straight skirt pattern. Um, it hits right below my knee. I did shorten this by three inches, I think, from the pattern. I'm only 5'2", so that kind of gives you a little bit of um, um, reference. Um, and this is, so my lining is 100% silk, China silk, but oh my gosh, I'm having such issues with static right now. Also, just dry air in particular. Thank you everyone for all of your hand cream suggestions. You guys are amazing, and I have so much to like look into now. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, but yeah, I did the little swing tacks down here to keep the lining attached to the skirt. I'm really hopeful. I haven't looked at the footage yet that my husband did of me actually wearing this, but I'm really hope I kept asking him if the static was making my hem look funny because I could feel the, the lining wrapping around my legs with static. So, um, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully <clears throat> when I was asking my photographer if the hem was lying straight, it was in fact lying straight. Time will tell. Again, I haven't looked at that footage yet. So anyway, um... Yeah, this, this pattern I really enjoy. I want to make the full skirt next. Um, let's see what else. This is a wool suiting. Um, it's got some stretch to it, which gets a little bit lost in this one because the lining is pretty tight to my body. Um, not so tight that I can't sit down, but um, it, I do like having a little bit of stretch. It just adds a little bit of um, just extra movement there. So there was the skirt. And then for the top, um, she's got a shorter sleeve on, which just really doesn't hit me in a very flattering, that sleeve length it can sometimes be unflattering on me because it'll hit across my fullest part of my bust, which will make me look wider, which is not what we're going for. So I decided to do a three quarter length, which is typically um, my preference. And I decided to pick, this is the uh, Maritime Tee by Liesl & Co. Um, I have been very impressed with her patterns and so was excited to try this one. This one's no different. Now I did not realize that this, so the, I mean, I could have looked at the line drawings a little closer, I guess, but <laughs> when I made this, the um, garment on the front of the pattern is striped, and I didn't realize this is a drop shoulder, but it is. It's a drop shoulder, which is actually fine. I, I, I don't mind that at all. It's a nice three-quarter length um, sleeve, but I really liked the scoop. Um, it's a boat neck, but not like super straight across boat neck. It has a little bit of a curve to it, and I really liked the way that that looked. Um, it's got a little bit of room in it. I've used this wonderful um, merino wool from the fabric store. Um, I've had a lot of questions actually on the merino wool at fabric store. So the fabric store is the shop down in New Zealand and they do sell like merino blend knits, especially for like active wear. Um, you know, they'll do like merino nylon blend, a merino poly blend and that kind of thing for um, active wear and people are like, it's so thin. You know, I was disappointed at how thin it was and that is super thin. 
Um, if you get their premium merino though, and that comes in like their color line, um, I actually got a, um, they were having a sale on some of their wool, and so I bought their um, swatch packet <laughs> that comes with all the colors of merino, because I just love this fabric so much. I wash it in the washing machine and then let it air dry, um, and that works perfectly. And actually, I washed and dried the yardage before I cut into it because I wanted no chances of anything shrinking because I have had a merino um, shirt that accidentally get, did get thrown into the dryer and it shrunk up in the length just enough. It's still wearable, but just. So <laughs> I, I didn't want that to happen to this one. So I went ahead and dried the yardage, but going forward, the idea is I wash it on delicate hand wash cycle and then I let them air dry um, on a drying rack. But anyway. Um, that's how I care for these. So I made, I'm typically a size, well this one doesn't have the cup size. I feel like I've made a size 8 in the tops though before with Liesl & Co. I think my classic shirt's a size 8 with a D cup, I think. Um, but I decided to size up on this to a size 10 just because I wanted it to be just a little bit roomier. I didn't want it too close and I was going off the um, finished garment measurements. So I think the finished garment measurements for a 10 was 39 and my bust is like a 40. So I thought one inch of negative ease would be just about right for this sweater. But because this is, and I could have totally done a full bust adjustment on this, I didn't. Um, but with the neckline, I knew that boat necklines can get really wide on me really quickly because I am narrow in my shoulders. Um, so I wanted to keep a small size on the neckline just so everything stayed nice and tight. So I did a size six in the neck and in the shoulder. And then I did, I graded from a 6 to a 10 at the um, side seam through the arm's eye. So I used the, I traced the size 10 arm's eye and then put it at the size 6 at the shoulder point and then just swing it out to the size 10 on the side seam. And then I use the size 10 sleeve and uh, do that on the front and back. And so it makes it just a little smaller up here at top. And then I just grade out to the larger size. And that seemed to work just fine. Um, I didn't adjust the body at all. And I don't think I adjust the sleeves at all either. I think I left them as is. I could be wrong. I may have shortened the sleeves by an inch, which is my typical, usually about what I need to, to shorten them. Anyway, I think it turned out really well. Now, you'll notice that the colors are not like identical, but I think I had my daughter come, um, I had bought this and then I also bought, let's see, this is called Peacock and I think I also bought their fern green or forest green, something like that, which is a little, has more yellow in it. And I held both up to her um, with her artist side for her to tell me which one she thought tonally looked better. And she picked this one, which was the original one that I had picked. So um, actually the other one may come this shirt too, just cause I really like this style on me. Um, and I did buy a few cuts of the Merino uh, because it's on sale and it's pretty pricey. I just love wearing it. So anyway, I thought that those two together gave me just a perfect um, look. So I will now show you um, footage of me actually in the Meghan Markle look and then I'll put us side by side, you know. <laughs> the idea is for me just to get inspiration. I know I don't look like her. <laughs> I only wish, but um, Anyway, I love her style. I love the Duchess of Cambridge, um, Kate Middleton's as well, but um, yeah, I, they're both classic, but I feel like Meghan Markle's um, can tend to go just a little bit more modern a little bit. And again, because of her hip to waist ratio, a lot of stuff is, will look flattering on me as well, if that makes sense. Um, what else about this pattern? Okay, also it has a facing at the neckline, which I'm not usually a fan of, but for the wider neckline, I think it worked out great. I interfaced my facing with a very lightweight, um, it's the Palmer Pletch Sew Sheer uh, Fusible Interfacing. And then I used my cover stitch machine to sew it down so everything lies nice and flat and really beautiful. So I'm really pleased with how that all turned out. And I think, I mean, I'm gonna get a ton of wear out of this sweater. I love the color and I love it with the bright lip. I think that that bright like peacocky teal blue with the orangey red lip looks so good. <laughs> so there we have that. Okay, so that is my Sew the Look outfit 
and very pleased with how that turned out. But I had enough of the fabric that I could make a jacket as well. So I thought, well, let's have some fun and let's, you know, I thought I could do a blazer. Um, and I like the idea of kind of doing a jacket, something I could wear as a blazer, but I wanted to mix it up a little bit and do something a little different. So enter charm patterns again, um, the princess coat. So I bought this coat pattern right when it came out. Uh, there was just something about the sleeves, about the drama. I just really, really loved it. And I thought the peplum style jacket would give me hips. Um, yeah, that's a really excellent style for me to wear because the larger hip makes my waist look smaller and also helps balance out my upper body. So it's really just a really good um, silhouette for me to have on my body. So I decided to do oopsie, the um, peplum version and um, ugh, I did the regular shawl collar. Again, this is the same fabric that the skirt is in peplum length. I did the tailored sleeve because I wanted this to be um, more um, blazer ish. Obviously it has this very dramatic shawl collar. I did the regular shawl collar. There's also an option for a notched one. I put one of my grandmother's vintage brooches on here. This one's a snowflake with some diamonds on it. Um, I thought that was appropriate for right now. We're having a lot of wintry weather <laughs> happening at the moment. So we'll just make it pretty. Um, let's see what to say about this. Um, the pattern does say that you can add shoulder pads to put them in there and see what you think. I did. I added a quarter inch shoulder pad in there and I also went ahead and added a sleeve head uh, just to make that sleeve hang um, really beautifully. I've talked ad nauseum about how much what a difference that that makes, and I, I'm pretty glad that I, I did that. It's a beautiful two-piece sleeve. I did make an adjustment to the sleeve. Um, I made it an inch wider um, because I just like need a little extra room. I have large upper arms, <laughs> need a little extra room in the bicep. I made a size eight with the F G. Is that right? Or maybe it's the E F. I think it's E F and then G H. I can't remember how the cup sizes go. I think this is the EF. Um, and I made this one, technically I'm like right in between an 8 and a 10. That's like really hard. And I think if I were making this as a coat and like a coating, I would have gone up to the 10 for more ease. Is that what I did? Yes. Yes. <laughs> I would have gone up to the size 10 and done the, um, I think I would have stayed with the EF probably, just gone up to the size 10 if I were using a heavier coating. So if I were making this as is, as it's really intended, I think I would do the size 10. But I decided to go with the um, eight, and technically, if I were making this as a coat, my cup size put me in the GH cup, but um, I went ahead and did the EF because I didn't need quite as much ease in the bust because I was wearing it as a blazer and less as a coat, if that makes sense. So I'd be wearing lighter layers underneath it. So that's the sizing that I did. I shortened the arms by an inch and a half, I think. I didn't do anything to the bodice. I did bound buttonholes. I used one of my scarves for the lining. Um, I did have to use these scarves, while nice and big, um, that was like it for the lining. So I don't know that I can even get a top out of any of those scarves, but they do make nice little um, linings there for the, uh, yeah, I just think that, isn't that pretty? <laughs> and then this is leftover lining, the last actually of this china silk that I used for the sleeves. It's the same that's in the lining in the skirt. Um, what else? Her instructions are wonderful on this. So um, she's got all of the interfacing pieces that you need for this. She talks about the roll line and actually there's a collar stand piece that goes all the way around and into the roll line because the way this is constructed, the back gets sewn and then this all is connected. Um, she talks you through um, you know, all the different sorts of, um, this is also not sitting on the hanger very well, is it? Um, all the different tailoring. Um, I, again, I'm very glad that I went ahead and did the, um, shoulder pads and the shoulder heads in the, the top there. Oh, I used buttons from my stash. These are vintage ones. They're leather, uh, that looked like they were still in pretty good condition. So I put those on the front. I think those give a nice vintage nod. What else to say about this? I don't know, I think it's just a really cute jacket. So I will show myself um, first in let's, uh, the outfit of, the whole outfit of the skirt and the, and the jacket, which I probably won't wear again very often as that. Um, I had it on, my husband's like, where are you planning to go in that? And I'm like, our walks, no. <laughs> That's my answer to everything. And I agree, it's probably a little bit more formal than what I'm gonna be wearing on a normal basis. Uh, maybe if I had an office job, it would be a nice fun suit to be able to wear. Um, hold on two secs, my battery's dying. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay, 
Um, but yeah, I don't know how, I mean, once we're going to church and stuff like that again, it would be great. Um, a wedding, it's just a beautiful suit, and I love being able to put a brooch with it. I think it's a nice vintage nod, but um, it's also classic, so um, I, I really like the, the outfit altogether. However, most likely I'll be wearing these as separates. So I did pair the jacket by itself with jeans and with some new heels. I got some new red high heels. I thought I needed some red ones. Um, Cole Haan was having a really big sale again, and so I bought my nude um, pumps that you saw in the full outfit, and then I bought a pair of red ones too. Um, I mean, they were like on deep discount, and I love them. <laughs> um, yeah, they're suede. The red ones are suede, and I think that they're just a really fun pop of color, and they match my lipstick. They're like the perfect shade of red of, for me. So uh, anyway, love it with the jeans and the jacket. I think that's a really fun look, and that could be a great date night look. Um, you know, when we're actually going places again. Um, that one can also walk around the neighborhood. Heck, I could just throw sneakers on with that and, um, you know, do our walks and stuff. I won't be walking in heels, but for our neighborhood walks, but you know, <laughs> you get the idea. And then with the uh, skirt, I love it with the boots. I think this is great. I am st I, I am going to church um, on Sundays. I lead a small group of fifth grade girls. Um, as a family, we aren't going into the sanctuary quite yet. Um, just, you know, just not comfortable in the very large groups of people. Um, even though masks are required, but um, I am going to the small group and leading that because it's a small group of, um, you know, I have like six to eight girls in there with me um, and we can stay distanced and we're all masked up. So anyway, I am going to church and I am dressing up for that. So this could definitely be a church outfit. I love it with the boots. I think that gives a nice uh, line and a little something different than wearing it with a heel or even sneakers. And basically I could wear, it's the same skirt as the other skirt that I made. So they can be worn very similarly, styled very similarly. So uh, I think yeah, good additions to my wardrobe. And then, of course, the sweater. I'll be wearing, you know, jeans, everything. Um, I have my orange pants on today. I think that would be a fun look, kind of a color-blocked look. A lot of fun. Okay, so there you have it. There is another jacket in the uh, coat slash jacket making month. Uh, another pattern I recommend. It's fantastic. I would love to make um, the longer skirted version. I know Sean from Kittenish Behavior just made two, um, and they look fantastic on her. She made the longer length, full length coat, and they look really good. Um, it's just a lot of variations in this pattern for, um, all sorts of different jackets and coats, so it's a good one. All right, the last coat that we will be covering is my bamboo coat again. That's the uh, plaid coat that I made earlier in the month. Well, I'm making it again, but I'm making the shorter version and I'm doing it with the add-on stand-up collar to recreate a different J. Crew coat that I had fallen in love with. Um, actually, in the middle of sewing that right now, I ran out of some materials and I'm waiting on a Wawak order to arrive so that I can finish doing that. But while I'm waiting to finish that coat, I did um, have time to get in, um, do my kids PJs that I had. Gosh, I think I did the plans video for that back before Christmas. Um, anyway, just not getting around to making those. So I will have a video probably up next week um, showing off their new pajamas that I made for them, as well as the bamboo coat. So, and then we'll be done with jacket make or coat making month. However, I do still have two coats that are on the um, back burner, one of which is the pleather kind of moto styled peplum jacket, which after, I, now that I've made this peplum jacket, um, I'm really excited about that leather one because I really like that silhouette on my body. Um, so I'm very excited to get that one made up. Probably at the end of February is my guess. And then, um, let's see, our next sew along is going to be the V8772, is that right? Blouse. And um, then the one after that is going to be the V1650, which is a trench coat pattern. Um, so I'll be making that coat obviously here soon too. But then we'll probably be done for a little bit. I still, you know, I'm ready to sew other things. I'm ready to sew some dresses and tops and stuff like that. Um, but I mean, I'm not completely sick of sewing coats and jackets because I love it that much. So <laughs> I don't know what that says about me, but there you go. Um, okay, so that's all I've got for today. I hope you guys have a wonderful Friday. I will see you Sunday for part two of the bound buttonhole um, tutorial. So this is the back side of the bound buttonholes. We're to that point in the coat um, and how to do that. And then Tuesday, I think will be, it'll either be my kids pajama pajamas or the bamboo coat, probably the bamboo coat. Um, my hopes to get that done this weekend and get that all filmed. So, and then we can be done with coat making month. All right, guys, I hope you have a wonderful weekend. I hope you get lots of sewing in and I will see you next time. Bye.